Hello students. So today uh, our agenda is uh, to discuss uh, the IS 23 that is called borrowing cost. This standard is about how to deal with borrowing cost. So first of all, the objective of this accounting standard, the objective of this accounting standard is to prescribe the accounting treatment for borrowing cost. Borrowing cost is in easy words is the finance cost that is the interest cost. So borrowing costs include interest on bank overdraft and interest on borrowings. Similarly, finance charge on finance lease and exchange differences on foreign currency borrowings where they are regarded as an adjustment to interest cost. So simply borrowing cost is the interest payment and the associated cost. Now this standard talks about that what would be the accounting treatment of borrowing cost, whether the borrowing cost is to be charged in profit and loss account as an expense or it would be capitalized as an asset or in the cost of an asset. So let's discuss first of all a few definitions. The borrowing cost definition. Borrowing cost may include interest expense calculated using the effective interest method finance charge in respect of finance lease in accordance with the relevant accounting standard and exchange differences arising from foreign currency borrowings. Now, what is uh, qualifying asset? Because if borrowing cost is associated with a qualifying asset, such borrowing cost is to be capitalized. So it's very important to know that what is a qualifying asset. A qualifying asset is any asset that takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. For example, you are planning to uh, develop a property plan and equipment. You are planning to establish a building. You are planning to construct a building. So obviously that building construction requires a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. So that means the construction of building is a qualifying asset. So a qualifying asset included property, plant and equipment and investment property during the construction period. Similarly, those intangible assets which are during the development stage and also known as also the made to order inventories. Yes, inventory can also be part of qualifying asset if that inventory is a made to order inventory. But if you are buying inventory which is already uh, ready to purchase, then it will not classified as a qualifying asset. IS23, uh, the scope of IS, IS23 says that two types of assets that would otherwise be qualifying assets are excluded from the scope of IS23. So what are those assets? Qualifying assets measured at fair value such as biological assets accounted for under IAS 41 agriculture. Inventories that are manufactured or otherwise produced in large quantities on a repetitive basis and that takes a substantial period to get ready for sale such as maturing whiskey. So these two specific items which are excluded from the definition of qualifying assets. Now the important thing, the accounting treatment. Borrowing cost which is directly attributable to the acquisition, purchase, construction or development or production of a qualifying asset form part of cost of that asset. So if, if you have obtained a loan from a bank in order to construct a building, so as building is a qualifying asset and any interest on loan is associated with the construction of the building, construction of the building is a qualifying asset. So such borrowing cost therefore should be capitalized in the production of that asset. And if it is not the case, you, you obtain a loan from a bank and such loan is not utilized for the uh, acquisition, construction or production of a qualifying asset. 
then the typical treatment is such finance cost is part of profit and loss account. So we usually see that finance cost is an item of profit and loss account, but this is standard says that sometimes the borrowing costs would be part of the cost of an asset, hence it is capitalized. Now, the measurement principle. There are two issues that we have to be cons consider in this uh, heading. One is there are two types of borrowing. First of all, the borrowing should be classified as it might be a it might be a journal borrowing and it might be a specific borrowing. How we can classify journal borrowing and a specific borrowing? For example, you are planning to construct a building, and for the construction of that building, you went to a, a bank and asked them to borrow 10 million USD. Now that 10 million USD loan is connected with a specific asset. So such borrowing is called the specific borrowing. Now, if you obtain 10 million USD from a bank or from multiple banks, and now you are planning to construct an asset and you are using amount for the construction of asset, then you're using money from journal borrowing, not from a specific borrowing. And what is the purpose of the classification? Where funds are borrowed specifically, the cost eligible for capitalization are the actual cost incurred less any income generated on the temporary investment of such borrowings. For example, say suppose you took a loan from a bank, 10 million USD at an interest rate of 10% per annum. And that is a specific borrowing. Now, the interest cost incurred on such borrowing would be capitalized on actual basis on the construction of an asset. And if temporarily you are not using the funds and you have deposited uh, the borrowed amount and you are getting interest income, then interest cost capitalizes the actual interest cost minus any income earned on that. But sometimes it happens that you have already acquired loan and now you are using that loan for the construction of an asset. In that case, it's a journal borrowing where funds are part of a journal pool. For example, you took loan from three banks, about uh, 2 million, 3 million and 5 million. This is a pool. The eligible amount is determined by applying a capitalization rate to the expenditure on that asset. And that capitalization rate will be the weighted average of the borrowing cost applicable to the journal pool. Now, for example, say suppose, you took a loan from bank one, 500,000 at an interest rate of 10%. Also from bank two, 300,000 at an interest rate of 8%. And now you are using amount that is 400,000 on the construction of an asset. Now, whether we'll use 10% interest rate or 8% interest rate as it's a journal pool. So what you have to do, you have to identify the capitalization rate. And that is the weighted average rate of all the borrowings. So 500,000 into 10%, the interest per annum is 50,000, 300,000, into 8%, the interest is 24,000. So this is 74,000 interest on 800,000. So the weighted average interest rate says that 74,000 is the interest on 800,000 borrowing. So the weighted average rate is 9.25%. So this is called the capitalization rate and whatever is the amount that you are using, you have to apply the annualized rate of 
five percent. That means the interest to be capitalized would be thirty seven thousand. So that is very important to classify that whether it's a journal borrowing or the specific borrowing. Now, a question is when to start capitalization of interest cost at the time of taking loan, or when the assets construction has started. So capitalization should commence when expenditure are being incurred. borrowing cost are being incurred and activities that are necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use or sale are in progress it may include some activities prior to commencement of physical production it doesn't means that the actual work has been started some preliminary work is also needed so we'll we'll take this preliminary work as commencement of capitalization so for example the loan has been initiated at 1st january but commencement start from 1st march 19 then what to do with jan fab interest then in such case the two month interest of january and fab is to be charged in profit and loss account as there was no commencement of capitalization similarly sometime it happens that the work has been stopped due to some reason so what would be the, what would be the impact of capitalization process it says that capitalization should be suspended during period in which active development is interrupted so it means that in such periods the interest cost is to be charged in profit and loss account now you have to see that whether that suspension is already predicted or already known if such suspension is already known you know that such suspension will took place then the capitalization process will be continued and if it is uh, some abnormal activity that created a suspension in such case there will be suspension of capitalization and interest will be charged in profit and loss account similarly the cessation of capitalization the capitalization of interest should be ceased when substantially all of the activities necessary to prepare the asset is complete if only minor modification is needed this indicates substantially all of the activities are complete and if still the amount is outstanding then interest would be charged in profit and loss account so this is an overview of uh, the is 23 borrowing cost very small very very precise standard and very few issues are being covered 